Gonna make you bend and break. Say a prayer, but let the good times roll. In case God doesn't show. And I want these words to make things right, but it's the wrongs that make the words come to life. But who does he think? Jane Adams was born on September 6, 1860, in Sutterville, Illinois. She was the youngest of the five children of Sarah Weber Adams and John Huey Adams. Her mother died when Adams was just two years old, and she was raised by her father and stepmother, Anna Haldeman Adams. At an early age, she decided to do something important with her life. Submitting to her father's demands, Adams attended Rockford Female Seminar from 1877 to 1881. Although she did not receive her degree until 1882, when the school became accredited as Rockford College, she graduated as valedictorian of a class of 17, Noble Foundation. She planned also to attend a woman's medical college in Philadelphia and work as a doctor among the poor, the American Second. Unfortunately, due to health issues, Adams was unable to attend Smith or Women's Medical College, so she traveled and studied in Europe for the first time. She traveled and studied in Europe for 21 months and then spent almost two years in reading and writing and in considering what her future objectives should be. At the age of 27, during a second tour to Europe with her friend Ellen G. Starr, she visited a settlement house Toyne V. Hall and London's, London's East End. This visit helped to finalize the idea, then current in her mind, that of opening a similar house in an underprivileged area of Chicago. In 1889, with Starr, Adams co-founded Hull House on South Halston Street in the slums of Chicago near West Side. Adams later wrote that their purpose was to provide a center for a high civic and social life, to institute and maintain educational and philanthropic enterprises, and to investigate and improve the conditions in the industrial districts of Chicago. She helped start the Chicago Federation of Settlements, the Chicago Federation of Settlements and Neighborhood Centers, also known as also known as CFSNC, was founded at Hull House in 1894. Her approach to things began to change, however, and she became motivated to physically improve her neighborhood. Concerns about, about the putrid conditions that bred rats in the alleys and streets, she was appointed a garbage, garbage inspector in 1895. In 1903, at Jane Adams became vice president of the National Women's Trade Union League. As her reputation grew, Ms. Adams was drawn into larger fields of civic responsibility. So from 1905 to 1908, Jane served as a member of the Chicago Board of Education. A pragmatist and an activist, Adams favored prohibition and woman suffrage, and she campaigned for Theodore Roosevelt's Progressive Party in 1912. Roosevelt had supported the goals of the National Conference of Charities and Corrections, of which Adam was, Adams was elected, 1909, the first female president. She was a founding member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP, 1909, and of the American Civil Liberties Union, 1920, and she also served as a vice president, 1911 to 1914, of the National American Woman Suffrage Association, also known as NAWSA. For Adams, politics was part of a larger movement to humanize the industrial city. 
She had always been a pacifist, and when World War I broke out in 1914, she became chair of the Women's Peace Party and president of the International Congress of Women, as well as its successor. As well as of its successor, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, actively from 1919 to 1929, in an honorary cap capacity thereafter. In 1915, she visited many countries in Europe, urging the end of the war through mediation and presiding at the International Conference of Women at the Hague. Also, also in 1915, specifically on January 10th, the Women's Peace Party is formed. For you see, on the outbreak of the First, first World War, a group of women pacifists in the United States began talking about the need to form an organization to help her bring it to an end. So Jane stepped in to help. Adams remained a pacifist when the United States entered the war in 1917. And as a result, she was denounced by many Americans, including Roosevelt. Publis publicly opposed to America's entry into the war, Miss Adams was attacked in the press and expelled from the Daughters of the American Revolution. But she found an outlet for humanitarian impulses as an assistant to Herbert Hoover in providing relief, supplies of food to the women and children of the enemy nation. The story of what she told in her book, in her book, Peace and Bread in Time of War, 1922. After sustaining a heart attack in 1926, Miss Adams never fully regained her health. Indeed, she was being admitted to a Baltimore hospital on the very day, December 10, 1931, that the Nobel Peace Prize was being awarded to her in Oslo. Then. On May 21st, 1935, disaster struck. Only three days after an operation revealed a only three days after an operation revealed unsuspected cancer, Jane died. The funeral service was held in the courtyard of Hull House. Noted as a true woman hero, on September 7, 2007, the Northwest Tollway. I-90, was renamed the Jane Addams Memorial Tallway. In 1919, she was a main concern for the U.S. and labeled the most dangerous woman in America. This seemed to be the point where her role in sociology fell. Although she made great contributions to the field of sociology, she is rarely a rarely acknowledged. She was looking for it to develop in a different direction. One very important reason Jane was not looked at, a, at as a sociologist was because she was female. Social work, which is mainly seen as dominated by women, and sociology as dominated by men, shortly, sh shortly formed after World War I. Those women trained in Chicago before 1918 were then pushed toward so social work and were rar rarely hired in sociology within universities. The American Sociological Society restricted women's participation to the office. This patriarchal mo monopoly was very much present at the University of Chicago and disagreed with Adams' philosophy. This field may have been different had Jane stayed with it, resulting in more professional careers in sociology, 1986. Although Jane has been labeled a social worker, it is very apparent that she played a large role in soci sociology. It is difficult to determine where, where because women were basically discouraged from entering the field. One author suggests that her work may have been understood since most sociologists never cited work done by close colleagues. Kessler, who studied early German sociologists, formed criteria to determine whether or not someone in a sociologist, which included, occupy a chair of sociology or teach it, 
Membership in the German Sociological Society changed in this case to the American Sociological Society. Co-author in socio sociological articles or textbooks. Self-definition as sociologist. And definition by others as sociologist. Jane meant, Jane met all of these requirements, <clears throat> not only because she was ignored, but those she associated with, Webb Du Bois, who was a black sociologist, were as well, such as. She simply made the whole house into a meeting place for both men and women sociologists of any race to gather. Uh, who does he think he 